As you know, we have a new member coming. Her name is London. Uh, let's give her a hand. She came to the I saw her yesterday. She was born at 210, and my wife was healthy, and my wife was concerned last week. She said, I'm afraid. I, I said, afraid of what? She said, uh, having a baby with pain. I said, well, it's, gonna, it's not going to hurt that bad. <laughs> that was Wednesday. I was I was trying to comfort her. And uh, yeah, yeah. Thursday we went in just for a routine checkup, and we were just going to the checkup, and I was getting ready to get on the plane and go to the game in in, um, in in West Virginia. And they said we see some issues right here, and we're concerned, but it may not be serious, but we don't want to take a chance. And the doctor said this: I couldn't live with myself if you know, something is wrong. But the heartbeat was not monitoring what they wanted to. And she said, we need to go ahead and, and, and uh, have the baby. My wife was like, when? And she said, right now. <laughs> so, so we ended up, at that point, one across the street to, of course, you know, a hospital. So they ran some more tests, and everything was fine, and, and baby London was born. And my wife didn't have any problems Thursday night. He was trying to do some Friday. It didn't work out. And he said, we'll try again Saturday. And, um, and then, you know, she was cheerful. I said, you're in pain, baby? No. She said, I'm good to go. And then Sarah, she looked at me, looked at me, and she said, "You made me sick." Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd. He's like, "What did I do?" You <laughs> did this to me. I said, "I didn't do nothing." So, so I knew right then, Sarah, the one we gonna have a baby that day. So, so I talked to Lady London. I told her that you are a new member. We're gonna have new membership orientation. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't ready for that this month, so I might wait a little longer. So I did learn something though. I knew Bill Clinton put out a law maybe 15 years ago that if someone have a baby, your wife have a baby, the man can take off time from work too. Yeah. And so being very intelligent, uh, Mr. Sylvester, I called into my job and I said, look, I want to take a maternity leave. And the woman started laughing, say it again. I said, maternity leave. She said, you mean paternity leave? I said, yeah, one of them. You know what I'm saying? It was somewhere around there. <laughs> 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 I've never done this before, so but I knew I had my right, so I'm taking my eight weeks all oh, you know. Right. Well today I want you guys, if you would, rest on your feet. We're gonna start a new train, James chapter 1, verses 13 through 18. Let no one say, when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts, tempts no one. But each person is being tempted when he is lured and enticed. Say lured and enticed. Lured and enticed. By his own desire. Say own desire. <laughs> then desire when it is conceived and gives birth to sin. And sin when it's fully grown. Say fully grown. Fully grown. Complete grown. Brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. Coming down from the Father of light, with whom there is no variation, say no variation, no variation. or shadow due to change. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Let's pray. Christian Father, thank you for the word of James. He's teaching us to count it all as joy. He's teaching us to ask God for wisdom. And now he's teaching us by different attraction. And he's telling us, Father, do not be deceived or enticed by the devil. And Father, as we listen to this message today, Father, we just pray that something will be said today uh, that we can all use and apply to our life. Father, thank you for your loving word. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. amen. Today I want to talk to you about some things. He said, don't be lured, don't be enticed. Don't be enticed. So today I want to talk to you about fatal attraction. I can remember when I was a kid, there was a movie out called Fatal Attraction. In the late 80s, Michael Douglas was a successful businessman, and there was a secretary or some lady who was looking good. Y'all know everything that looks good to you is not good for you. Right. He was married, had a family, and what, for whatever reason, he ended up having a relationship with this lady. He thought it was going to be all fun and game. You know, sometimes sin feels good, right? Yeah. I listened to the radio show, a guy named Big Papa Soul. He said, I'm the, the, uh, the best one who did it and got away with it. Oh, 
Well, you're going to get caught up. And what happened was he was ready to break the relationship off with the lady, and she said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not ready to break up yet. And he had a pet rabbit at home, and she was just not happy with the breakup. You know people don't like getting broke up with sometimes, right? <laughs> he comes home, and the lady's cooking his rabbit. <laughs> and so what I'm saying to you sometimes, it looks like it's fun and happy at the point in time, but you don't want to come home and have some rabbit stew. You don't want to come home and your, your rock wild is being cooked by some crazy lady. You understand what I'm saying? And so it's what people do once they get you in and you try to cut things out, they find out what you love. If it's your car, you best believe your windows will be bust out of your car. I really believe this right here. Anything worth having is worth filling in. You go, you might try to give a speech and you might not do that. Well, but you know God put that talent in you. Don't let the devil discourage you. But what God is saying right here that the devil is going to entice you, he's going to reach out for you, and he is going to try to trip you up. And see, what God does sometimes, he put trials in our life, but that's only to, for us to prove our faith. That's to make us stronger. But the devil put temptations in our life for us to stumble. That is the difference. That is the difference. So you have to know the difference between a trial and temptation. God is telling you, you may not get promoted right now. Hey, hang in there. Somebody got promoted over you. Hang in there. Yeah, that's the way to go. The devil is telling you, why go to college? Why do those different things? You can make money the fast way. That's not of God right there. That is not of God. But the heart, the trials and the hardships are making you stronger. But when you're being tempted, that's when you're being drawn away from God. Anything that draws you away from him, that's not of God. And God is telling you, it's not of me. So number one, my first point is the courtship. The devil is going to court you now. It's kind of like you're in school, you send somebody a letter. You know, you know all of them on that. And you say, would you go with me? Circle, yes, or anybody know what I'm talking about? Yes or no. Yeah. And what I like about these kids, they, I mean, you're six and seven, you don't know them, but you just tell it how it is, right? And then we get older and grown, you want to add some flair to it, and want to drop out pencil, or you want to drop your books, and you know, you're in junior high. You just don't say, would you go with me, circle yes or no. It's like, I really don't like him, but you know, you always, you understand what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And so, we, but the devil, what he does to us, he dangles stuff in front of us, and he caught up. But he's saying right here, James is saying there's a definite possibility that you will be tempted. Jackson State, before they come out and play a game, the band had a song. Get ready. <laughs> it, 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 dun, 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 they, it, get ready. The music come out. The fans go wild. They saying, get ready. Here we come. Well, Tim Chasen said the same thing. Get ready. Here it comes each and every day. That's what he says. Let no one say when. Underline when. When he is tempted. It didn't say if. It said when he is. That's definitely you will be tempted now. But you don't have to circle yes. When they ask you, would you go to yes or no? That's the problem. Credit cards are bad about that. They send you mail or hit mail all the time. You are a, what kind of customer? Uh, preferred. Preferred customer. <laughs> How special. <laughs> they tell you, you preferred. They, they tell you you can have this, you can win this vacation, but they don't tell you when you charge that credit card up, it's going to take you 10 years if you pay the minimum payment. They don't tell you that part. The finished product, they just tell you the good part. And you can go any cruise you want to. And it, that's what I like about vacation. I don't want to take a vacation, they're going to follow me home. That makes sense to you. I don't want to use a card. I can't pay for it. I don't want to go now. That's just me now. I don't want to be a preferred customer because you're telling me the good part, but you're not telling me how you're going to stand in my back for the next 10 years if I don't have the payment for you. But what I'm saying right here, he's saying it's, it's definite now. You don't have some trial. So to that point, I'll be glad when this happens. I'll be glad when I get here. Stop being glad. Be glad now. Thank God for now. Understand what your trials are. Stand against your trials. Endure your trial. Face your trial. When that devil try to take you, take a shortcut. Look, it's time to pray to God now. But not only would that be a definite possibility, but he said right now is a divine impossibility. Okay. It's not of God. It's not God that's tempting you now. God sent you through trials, but he's not tempting you. He's not taking, telling you to take your leadership skill and be a drug lord. He's telling you to be a CEO. He's not telling you to do that. And what we do sometimes, we want to blame God. We want to blame others. We want to blame my society. We want to blame, for, um, blame my upbringing. We talked about Adam and Eve not too long ago. God walked into the garden, asked Eve, what's going on? I mean, asked Adam, what did he say? It was Eve. Is that woman you gave me? Now look at this. He don't want to take blame. 
The woman said it was a snake. Everybody passing blame. Society tells us about we should not take blame no more. Now we got something called a no fault divorce. Give me a break. It's somebody's fault. No fault. We see people do certain things, and what we do, we say, well, it was his family. You should know. We know. He know right from wrong. He's 30 years old. It's time you start going and doing crazy stuff for your daddy left when you was three. I mean, get over it, right? He's saying right here, you cannot. It's time for you to take responsibility. It's not them. It's you. It is you. And what the devil do, he entice us. I don't know about y'all. Anybody fishing here? I like to fish. I don't lie. But the first time I caught a bass, I threw it out there. I threw it out there fishing. And my mama told me he took a piece of wood. It wasn't a real fish. It was a piece of wood with some paint on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was red at the top and yellow on the bottom. Look, then I mean, it was like, you know, I'm like, he put paint in some wood, wood, and it made it look, put some eyes on it, and, but he put a hook up in it. <laughs> and he said, throw it by that lily pad, by that, you know, by that branch, go by the lily pad, throw over there. And he said, move it. And I'm moving it. And I'm like, surely, now I'm five years old. Now I realize, surely a bass ain't dumb enough to bite this hook. But it was something in that lily pad, I kept, I kept throwing it over there, I kept moving it, and it moving it. But it was something that Baz had told him. And said, he said to himself, I got to have that. And he ended up biting it, and he was on my hook, and I cried him hard. And so what I'm saying to you sometimes, <laughs> the devil he put something in you, you say, I got to have this. I cannot live without this, what they call that, the MK, the Martin Luther King purse, or what they call it? I can't live without this purse. And you got girls that's 16, 17 years old, right, with an MK purse, right, $400 purse with $4 in it. You, know? <laughs> you got guys out right here. Oh, I'm serious. They wearing shoes and Air Jordan. They got two hundred dollars shoes, and they don't have two dollars in pocket. The devil is telling you if you don't have this, you're not cool. It's okay to have it, but when the devil tell you, he'll tell you buy this with you. So the devil, I don't have the money. The devil tell you you get paid next week. We don't know what's gonna come happen. Though. What's gonna happen between now and next week? And so what he's saying right here, you are the problem. It's not God. Now God is not leading you to do that. I was in church one time, later giving a testimony. She said, thank God. Everybody was talking about how God blessed her. She said, God blessed me with $700. And she said, my neighbor house caught on fire. And I went out to check on it. And my neighbor would run out the house. My neighbor would say, everybody, like, thank God. And she said, my neighbor dropped $700. And the Lord told me to put my foot on it. <laughs> I'm like, you're just stealing it. And, and they started clapping at the church. I'm like, are you serious? That wasn't of God. <laughs> that, that was not of God. You <laughs> think? <laughs> and what we do sometimes, we got the hookup. That's not of God. You got this purse. You know you bought MK purse for $50. You know, hustle man selling it to you. You think he purchased that for $300, $400, and brought soda to you for $50. That's not of God. Some of y'all love hot stuff and, and, and hot meat. They love uh, hot clothes and hot stuff. I mean, come on now. That's not of God. I always want. I was just living in Green Brother, Mr. Mike, and people uh, have a cable running from somebody else's house, right, into their apartment. That's not of God. Y'all know people like that. They, they stop doing all that kind of stuff. The hookup's still going on. It's still going on. Okay, okay. So that's not of God. I need to I thank God for this cable. I'm an 800 channel. That's not a I mean, Come on now. <laughs> I know for everything they got is hot and stolen. They just think that God is blessing them. No, that is not of God. And so what happened is the devil courts court you. He enticed you. He had you fully different things. But that's why. I used to be in D.C. was right by 16th Avenue. I was a little boy. They were my dad. And they, what do you think they call prostitutes? Hookers. Huh? They wear certain things and they hook you. You understand what I'm saying? And the devil, all he want to do is hook you. He's going to show you one thing, the good life, and he's going to hook you on the other end. Okay, move it on from that. But look, not only would that be the courtship, that would be the consent. When I was a kid at T.L. Elementary, we used to go on a field trip. And they said, take this note to your mother, and it's called a consent form. It means that she allows me to go on this. <laughs> Come on now. When the devil dig on something into your faith, now you can say no now. But it's up to you to take it. But why do you take it? Number one, there's an outward attraction. You got to have it like a rat. 
You want to look good for the people, impress people, and I say it all the time, impress people who don't like you anyway. You're trying to impress them, and you want to look a certain way. You're not out to just make more money, you want to look like money. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And so if you start making money, you look like you don't have to, you walk in the room a certain way. You don't have to have what society say is the thing to do. And so what happened right here, you end up with this outward attraction. There was a guy one time walking in the farm, <laughs> he had a big uh, basket, and he was throwing beans out. And there was a lot of pigs running by off, walking behind him. He was just throwing beans out. And the pigs were walking behind him. I walk, walk behind him. And people were like, that's a weird, weird way to feed the pigs. And he said, this is the way I lead them to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> you understand know what I'm saying? And that's what the devil do to us sometimes. Everything he's throwing out there, he's just leading you to the slaughterhouse. You think you're getting good beings in your life, but now he's going to come back. And he said, each person is, good, is tempted when he is lured. The fish is lured. The bait, whatever that bait is, whatever that bait you've been lured out there, and now, but not only was there outward attraction, but the inward attraction too. See, it wouldn't have caught your eye if it wasn't inside of you anyway. And this is what God said right here. And enticed by who was I? Come on now. Enticed by who? It was something already up in you. And when the devil knows, he knows your desire. He knows what's in you that you have to suppress sometimes. There was a guy named St. Augustine, right? He was known back in the day. He had a lot of money. He was a good saint, preacher man. At one point in time, he was in the world. And he used to hang out with the prostitutes and people, and he was the man. I mean, he just used his money for the wrong thing. And Christ came into his life, and he was walking. He said in his book, he was walking down the avenue one day, and, 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 and he said, this lady who used to hang out with his ex-girlfriend and all that, they were like, hey, hey, Augustine. You know, they didn't call him St. Augustine back then, Augustine. And he, before he saw her coming before he then, she was going to some bar, he walked across the street. And she, she kept yelling his name, Augustine, Augustine. He said, you know, yes, but I'm not that same guy anymore. And sometimes we have to avoid some things that, you know, that old desire. If you don't stay away from it, it'll hook you back. Okay, if you are a former alcoholic, you don't need to work in the liquor store. I mean, that's just not the place for you. Sometimes there's some things out there you just shouldn't, they're going to hook you every single time. And the devil will entice you. This weekend, Ms. Um, Faye told me to go find a deal the other day. She said, you need to go to this place and get some discount. So I was, I got a problem. You know, I like boots, right? Y'all know that? I can tell y'all that. But I like boots. And I saw these stingray boots that I wanted. It was size 12. But it was one price for one. I kept looking. They keep sending stuff to my phone. See, they don't know how to do it. Once you buy something, put your email in there. Yeah, yeah. It keeps coming to your phone now. <laughs> so then I said, I'm not going to buy no more boots this month, right? And I had some cars, I saw them, them little burgundy boots right there, them steam rays. So I started to buy them. But Miss Faye told me you can be discount pricing. And so I kept looking, and then I saw some other boots, same kind of boots, but discount price, size 12. So I ordered the boots, and they sent them to the house, and look what they got me, size 12 kid. <laughs> <laughs> Everything that looked good, that good, that good. <laughs>
you have a conception. I think I was in the hospital a lot of the three or four women had babies yesterday. Around, within, around two o'clock. And the doctor said, we're going crazy. All three of them at the same time. But before the birth, there was a conception, right? Then am I, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> Now they can say, I didn't do nothing. Somebody did something, right? <laughs> so not only was that conception, but what does a conception to the kid's birth? <laughs> but look, he said, now it's conceived and gives what? Birth sin. It gives it sin. But what happens when it gives birth? See, they don't tell you that that's that other side. This is what they do. I watch commercials sometimes. They just have butt wise. And it looks so good, don't it? And then they have a client there. It's like, man, you know what? I need Clydesdale. I'm, I'm a Clydesdale man. And then they have the mountains, the water falling down. Then they have a guy sitting there with a, he'll open a, a Budweiser. And then he's sitting up on the water fountain, and the water's running down his abs. He got a six pack of abs. You keep dragging them Budweiser, you ain't gonna have no six pack of abs. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the birth that we need to have that. And then uh, it kills birth, but what did it do at the end? It brings death. It brings death. There was a preacher in uh, Florida. He was, uh, he was, he was saying, you know what? And our and, uh, bishop said today, the final product. The devil don't tell you the final product. You know that small right at the end, you buy something. Well, you know how you take medicine, it'll cure it in. But then at the end, you're like, man, I really don't know if I want this cure because it give you all that. <laughs> so what he did, he had a billboard with beer on there. And, you know, you can open bit beer and. Um, he had a guy on there, he had a guy on the bench, he had a guy that was like, like he was a bum, he had a, another guy, a rat running around. He had a billboard that didn't look good. The beer company in the town said, hey sir, I need to talk to you, preacher. And the beer company has billboards around town, commercial, he said, look, you're hurting my business because you're putting a negative light on my business and that's room for lawsuit. He said, no, that's not a room for lawsuit. You told the first part. I told the last part. <laughs> And he said, I do, do me a favor, I'll make a deal with you. If you stop advertising on the radio, the positive part, I'll stop advertising the end. But see, they'll tell you about the Clydesdale. They'll show you the mountaintops and Rocky Mountain cores right now, but they don't show you the kid that had gone through a windshield and they have a sheet over him and why the family tried to have come to identify him. And what the guy was saying, I'm going to tell it all. When you get grown, you won't folks tell you all. They tell you the good part, you can, you know, they try to sell you something, okay, tell me to come. I want to know all about this because I've been lured before and I realized that some stuff just is not as good as it's said. He said, sin when it fully grown brings devil. And at the end of the day, when fully grown, right? You born when you get grown. And see, sometimes in babies, we don't see everything. You know, we don't see, you don't see somebody getting in trouble. Like, man, what happened all of a sudden? Now they've been growing the whole time. You just didn't know about that. I was talking to Mike last week. He said he used to work for, uh, he used to buy cars. He went somewhere and they picked up a hearse and brought it back. And him and his friend got riding back. He said he decided he was tired. He decided to get in the back and get some sleep. So they're driving down the interstate. <laughs> and Mike woke up. He didn't mean nothing. You know, on the side of the hearse, you have a big curtain, right? <laughs> he said he decided to just open up and look at it. He said people almost had a wreck. You know what I'm saying? The dead man is alive. <laughs> And some of us sometimes, the devil think he got you dead, you need to wake up and come alive. <laughs> He's telling you that you're not smart enough. He's telling you that you don't have the financial savvy. He's telling you that you don't have the willpower. You got to wake up sometime and look at show the devil. You got to scare the devil sometime. And, and so where he, 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 when he gives you the wrong plan, and he gives you the wrong plan, you end up in a horrible situation. This is at the end. I just want to share a couple of verses with you because I realize the devil does this. He gives us the devil LSD. That's a drug. He gives you the lust. It's already in you. He gives you the sin, right? And then he gives you the devil. He gives you the LSD. And so what happens is sometimes we fall into that, but, sometimes, but when you know better, it's time to start doing better. And what we do sometimes, we keep getting trapped by the same desire. If you are a, if you are a people pleaser, people will the devil gonna put people in your life that don't play on. And there's so many people out there that are broke, disgusted, and all different things. If they sit together, they link up with somebody who just takes them all the way through there, 
And the only thing is, you're saying it don't make sense. You see what's going on, but they want to. They don't want to mad at them. You know, about those people like that. Don't want mad at them. I don't care how mad you get it. You know. So the point being is, you got to find out what's up in you that keep having you doing the same old, same old. Proverbs. Or what's up in us? I'm sorry. I'm in that. I'm in that group. This is Proverbs 23 and 31. I saw a few verses. I just want to point out a few things. And this is a thing to tell you about the good life. And this is what it says about it. It says, do not look at wine when it is red, when it sparkles, right, in the cup, it goes down smoothly. And it says, in the end, say in the end, <laughs> it bites you like a hoop, and it stings you. It stings you. How many people tired of getting to the very end of it, and you end up busted and disgusted? Anybody tired of that He's telling you to walk past that apple pie. But you said, let me just try one piece. <laughs> Who can try one piece? Come on now. <laughs> and then you end up, you get home, you leave the restaurant, you know you should have went to the buffet. You should have got your portion side. You leave the restaurant, and you like me, I just cannot go to a restaurant and eat a salad. I just, I just, I mean, I pay $13, I just feel like I gotta get my money. Anybody got that same problem? I feel like I got to eat. I, hey, when I get in the car, I got to unbuckle my money. Yeah, I, I, and I know that's called gluttony. I know that's a problem. I just feel like. Anyway, if I got that problem, I just, I got to get my money, but I'm sorry. I'm going to eat for one meal for the whole day. I'm sorry. Hey, I'm, <laughs> that's a problem. At the end of the day, you sit, you don't feel good. You just, come on now. Okay, I'm going to leave that alone because that just don't, don't sound right. <laughs> okay, now, not only is that going on, here's another one. You might not have an issue with trying to be all you can be sometimes. Sometimes you may have some some problem with immortality, okay? This is for you. I got something for everybody. This is you. It says, for the lips of the who? Forbidden woman, right? <coughs> it says, what? Woman drip what? Honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. Everybody knows some smooth operators? <laughs> huh? You ever had somebody get you? Like, no, you know what? And you have to just laugh sometimes, because you know that was kind of smooth, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You ever got played sometimes you didn't want to tell nobody? <laughs> and now I know they played you one, but they're like, you said you caught them on something, you know it's not like you think. See? And they go to another angle, and you're like, okay, that makes sense. And then they catch you again, you're like, man, why am I keep falling? <laughs> because you love the, I love it her. You know what I'm saying? No, no. That's my cousin say love it her. <laughs> Good gift and perfect gift come from God. And there's no variation. His word never changed, never changed. But it's because of us sometimes, our selfish desire, we want to do certain things a certain way and we mess it up. How many people try things your way and they mess it up? And we keep messing it up. And so what we want to pray today is we want to pray for a heart transplant. There was a guy, he went to the doctor, and he said, Doctor, there's an issue going on with me. He said, something wrong with my eyes, something wrong with my hand, and something wrong with my feet. He was talking to Dr. Law. Dr. Law said, well, can be diagnosed you? He said, my hands keep touching things that shouldn't touch. My eyes keep looking at things that shouldn't look at you. And my feet keep taking me to places I shouldn't go. The doctor said, well, you know what? I can't help you. You need to go across the hall to Dr. Gray. He said, you can't prescribe me something. He said, what you got, I can't prescribe. He said, I can just only diagnose you. And what he said, he went down to Dr. Gray. Sometimes you need to go to Dr. Jesus, right? He said, it's not a problem with your hand. It's your heart that's moving your hand. It's not a problem with your eyes. It's your heart that's moving your eyes. And he said, this guy, he prayed with him. He prayed with him. He brought Jesus to his life and changed his heart. But when Jesus changed you, you still got to stay away from that thing that suppressed the old habits, the old desires. And so what we want to pray for today is, God, help me with these old desires that I know of my own desire. And the devil, every time he dangles it in my face, I try to stay away for a day or two. But I end up going back. Anybody that went back to Sabushi? 